In just a short space of time, we've gone from a tiny range of Mercedes AMG's GT to actually being a little bit spoilt now with a whole selection of coupes and convertibles. Starting at the entry level with the GT and 350 kilowatts, moving up to the middle of the range and the GTS, which has 375, and then if you're feeling completely bonkers, you can have the GTR at the top of the range and 430 kilowatts. But for those days when that's just a little bit too much, we've now got this, the AMG GTC. With 410 kilowatts, the GTC certainly has the mumbo under its bonnet, but Mercedes says that the C stands for comfort. So what we could be looking at here is the absolute sweet spot in the range. But before we get behind the wheel of the GTC and see exactly what that offers to the range, there is the small matter of getting acquainted with this, the GTR. It's got 430 kilowatts, carbon ceramic brakes, and that fantastic satin metallic green paint. And we've come all the way here to the Bilsterberg track in northern Germany to see exactly what it can do. This is the GTR. And for the time being, this is as raw and wild as the AMG GT gets. It is very stiff and very much geared for the environment we're in right now, the racetrack. Now, as we know from the S63 Coupe and Cabriolet, this four litre twin turbo V8 has got a lot more in it. In the case of that car, you've got up to 450 kilowatts and 900 newton meters of torque. I can safely say the GCR does not need that in any way, shape or form. Whoa, it's trying to step out at every opportunity. A gentle hand and toe is required in this thing. Into this nightmarish chicane again. Whoa, it's just, I feel like this car is trying to kill me all the time and yet at the last minute it steps in to save me with per perfect poise and lovely balance. I'm gonna take my life in my hands and flick it to race mode, which turns off not completely the traction control and the stability systems, but gives me a little bit more opportunity to make a few mistakes like that. Land that. <laughs> I'm not going for good lines anymore. I'm just going for <laughs> that. I can see how so much about this car would be an absolute handful and way too much on public roads day to day which is exactly where the GTC comes in. It's a little bit softer, it only has 20 kilowatts fewer in power, but a chassis that hopefully you can live with day to day. Until now there was a gap between the GTS and the GTR. And customers wanting perhaps a little bit more performance over the GTS not that 375 kilowatts is to be sniffed at, and now getting exactly what they've been wishing for with 410 in this car. But rather than offering a chassis and suspension package that also filled the gap, what they've cleverly done is position this car some way back from the GTS. So you've got the performance that is snapping at the heels of the GTR, but a suspension and chassis package which is altogether much nicer to live with. It's not for everyone. I'm not saying that this is some kind of cosseting ride, like floating around on a magic carpet, but for many people who are after something that likes to be looked at and that is huge fun, whether you put it on the road or the circuit, the GTC covers a lot of bases. GTC is very composed, it's very nice. Only a few little undulations and imperfections in the road remind you that you're in something very sporty, as sporty as the GT range. If we flick it into, say, Sport or Sport Plus, immediately you can hear that uh, very shouty tailpipe at the back gets a little bit more vocal and the suspension gets stiffened up a little bit as well. But it's still not the snarling spittle fleck flying GTR that we just hopped out of. You've still got a car that is comfortable, but when you need it to be, like I do now,
that little bit of performance heritage makes itself very apparent. But don't make the mistake of thinking that just because the C stands for comfort, that this car is anything like soft or a bit of a half-assed attempt at a GT. Because when you find a fantastic road like this, where you can really stretch its legs, that performance comes alive like everything else in the range. This is not a compromise by any means. I've got the same lightning gear changes, I've got the same rifle cracks that sound like fireworks out of the tailpipe in a car that actually is incredibly well packaged and well balanced. So it's impossible to drive a car like this without comparing it to a very obvious rival and the Porsche 911. A car that at wheels we regard as one of the greatest all-round sports cars on the market. Anything that's going to come to the market and try and challenge that had better have a pretty strong game plan. But the GTC does. It's a really strong competitor for a number of really good reasons. One is that fantastic engine. It's got so much character and so much soul. The other is that really playful chassis, which in the case of the GTC is sharp and communicative. The steering doesn't quite live up to the 911's poise and pointiness. And traction really can't compete with the 911, which has that unbeatable recipe. When you've only got two wheels to drive, you put the engine straight over the driven wheels for just about the best traction in the class. I get the sense from this car that in the wet it would be too much of a handful. But the thing that this does possibly better than the 911 is in its presence and its aggressive stance. People can't help but look at this car. It has such a intimidating and imposing presence on the road. If you want a car that's going to get noticed and probably noticed a whole lot more than a 911, then this one will do it. So clearly what AMG is doing with the GTC and the whole GT range for that matter is abiding by the law that if you want to be a premium and prestige car manufacturer you have to offer choice. Choice in this segment is king. But with six such capable options in the AMG GT lineup and more likely to join it, that choice is getting harder all the time. Whereas some of the others Please in the flip. At the second exit. You young lady, you just introduced annoyance to my video. Not something I wanted, really, no. What a lovely car.